The story of Sergeant Alvin C. York is a compelling tale of heroism, sacrifice, and tragedy. Born in a poor family in rural Tennessee, York had a difficult childhood and limited education. But when World War I broke out, he was drafted into the Army and quickly rose to become one of the most decorated American soldiers of the war. His bravery and marksmanship skills were legendary, and his actions on the battlefield of the Moose Argonne Offensive in France earned him the Medal of Honor, the highest military decoration in the United States. Yet, despite his heroism and fame, York struggled to adjust to civilian life after the war. He suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and struggled with alcoholism, which led to the disillusion of his marriage and the loss of his fortune. His life took a tragic turn and he eventually became an advocate for peace and a vocal critic of war. This is the story of Sergeant Alvin C. York, a man who exemplified the best of America in the face of adversity and the worst of it in the aftermath of war. His life and sad ending continue to inspire and challenge us today. Alvin Cullum York was born in a humble two-room cabin on December 13, 1887, nestled in the Wolf River Valley in Tennessee's Cumberland Mountains. The region was known for its harsh living conditions, poverty, and fiercely independent inhabitants. William and Mary York, Alvin's parents, worked tirelessly to support their large family of 11 children. His father supplemented the family income by working as a blacksmith, while the family farmed the Rocky Mountain soil. Hunting was not a sport, but an important means of survival, and young Alvin learned the art of sharpshooting from his father, which would prove invaluable in the years to come. At a very young age, Alvin became skilled at killing turkeys with a single shot to the head. He won local turkey shoots and other contests, which helped supplement the family income. Despite developing rifle skills and farming know-how, he received very little schooling as he could not be spared from his chores. He attended classes for a total of nine months, only getting through third grade and never being able to read well. As Alvin grew older, he regretted his lack of education and vowed to give other mountain children the chance to learn. He made it his mission to ensure that mountain children had access to education, a cause that he would champion in the years to come. In 1911, Alvin York's father passed away, leaving him with an even greater responsibility to provide for his family. Along with farming and hunting, York worked as a day laborer on railroad or highway crews to make ends meet. However, he also developed bad habits, including drinking, gambling, and spending his free time in rowdy bars that often led to fights. After a few years of this wild and reckless behavior, York realized that he needed to make a change. Despite his serious nature, he knew that his rowdy lifestyle would lead to trouble, possibly even jail or death. But what truly inspired him to change was his growing attachment to a young neighbor woman named Gracie Williams. Although he wasn't much of a churchgoer, Gracie took him to her church, the Church of Christ and Christian Union. It was there that York had a spiritual experience and felt that God spoke to him. He was saved and became an active member of the church in 1914. The Church of Christ and Christian Union was a strict sect that forbade drinking, dancing, movies, swimming, swearing, and any form of violence. By 1917, York had become second elder in the church, a high office that showed his commitment to his faith. He left his roughneck lifestyle behind for good. Once the United States entered World War I in 1917, Alvin York was drafted to serve in the military. Being a deeply religious man, York applied for consensus objector status, hoping to be exempt from combat due to his beliefs. Unfortunately, his application was denied because his church was not nationally recognized. York was then sent to Camp Gordon, Georgia for training. Despite his reluctance to shoot at human-shaped targets during practice, he impressed his officers with his remarkable marksmanship skills. York could hit a target from a distance of 500 yards with ease. He was then assigned to Company G in 328th Infantry, which was attached to the 82nd Division, a combat unit that would soon see action in Europe. As York arrived in France in June 1918, he was still hesitant about killing people in combat. His commanding officers, Captain Edward Danforth and Major George Edward Buxton, 
tried to convince him that the war was a holy cause and that God was on the side of the Allies. On October 8th, York's platoon was ordered to capture a German machine gun installation at the Argonne Forest in northern France. Sneaking up on the Germans, the American platoon was taken by surprise when the Germans signaled another group to open fire. The Americans were almost all killed and York was left with only a few men. Using his sharpshooting skills, York picked off the German machine gunners just like he used to shoot turkeys through the head on his hunting trips. The Germans were infuriated and sent five men with bayonets to kill the American marksmen. However, York calmly shot each of them, starting with the one in the back so that the men in the front wouldn't know what was happening, another turkey hunting technique. This became the most famous moment of York's life, and his bravery skill earned him the Medal of Honor, the highest military decoration awarded by the United States government. When Alvin York returned home in May 1919, he became the center of attention for the American press and public. However, he did not feel proud of having killed during the war, and he went back to the Wolf River Valley to marry his neighbor, Gracie Williams. York remained active in the Church of Christ in Christian Union, and in 1926, he established the Alvin C. York Institute, a school for young people in his home county of Fentress. He traveled around the country to raise funds for the school, sharing his experiences from the war. In 1941, despite his church's ban on movies, York agreed to a film adaptation of his life, starring the renowned actor Gary Cooper as him. The movie brought York back into the limelight and helped garner support for America's involvement in World War II. Even though the film and his speaking engagements provided York with a good income, he had never learned how to handle money. Sergeant Alvin York, the decorated World War I hero, struggled with finances despite his popularity and success after the war. Despite his attempts to give away most of his earnings and make investments, he found himself in debt. However, his community and supporters across the country stood by him and his family. In 1954, York suffered a stroke that left him permanently disabled. Sadly, on September 2, 1964, York passed away from another stroke at the Nashville Veterans Hospital, surrounded by his family at the age of 76. Although his life was marked by financial hardship and health issues, York remained a beloved figure in his community and throughout the United States. His legacy as a brave soldier and humble man who overcame adversity continues to inspire generations. Goodbye and rest in peace, Alvin C. York.